Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jin Li. Uh, I recently graduated from University of Maryland, a fair protection engineering. Now I'm a new faculty member in the uh, uh, University of New Haven, fair science and professional studies in the criminal justice and foreign science college. So I'm, uh, my topic uh, today is paralysis, uh, parameterization, and validation for the polaramic materials. So here's my outline. Um, I will give you a brief introduction about my work. And uh, since my work is a multi uh, it's like a multi-scale approach. So we, I'm going to start with the uh, uh, milligram scale first and uh, extend my measure to the bench scale. Then I'm going to the, uh, going to give you a conclusion. OK. So there's a number of ways to name the polymers. So, so one of the way actually for the uh, interest of the fire people is actually to look at their residues after the burning. So here I want to give you an example of the polymers. On the left hand side, on the top and the bottom figures showing the polymers, it's the non charging polymers before it's burning and after it's burning in the cone calorimeter. And on the right hand side, this is a type of polymers that has can burn, but it gives a lot of char, which in this polymer gives particularly about 50% of the uh, uh, mass residues after the burning. So the reason why we want to study the charning polymers because usually the charning polymers gives a lot of like a porous structure, like shown in this figure, and uh, this is very important uh, in the uh, fair uh, materials applications because. It actually captures almost half of the carbon which is supposed to be burned in the atmosphere. So actually lower, have the extremely lower uh, heat release rate during the uh, uh, fire scenario. So here I want to give you a brief overview of the, a list of the polymers that exist in the industry. And uh, they have a different uh, uh, rank of the uh, flammabilities. So it's really hard to uh, name one standard to uh, give which polymer is better than the other. Here, the people in FAA using a uh, uh, micro scale uh, combustion calorimeter uh, called MCC to look at different polymers uh, flammability. Basically, they look at the, their uh, total heat release rate over the heating rate. So basically, they uh, plot this plot with different kinds of polymers. Some of the polymers are flammable, and some of them are not flammable. So some of the polymers are not flammable, they can use it in the aircraft. And uh, the, the polymers that are highlighted in this plot are the polymers that are included in my study. Uh, so my work is actually give you ideas that we can systematically me measure all the polymer properties that can be used in the CFT work. And, uh, we want to demonstrate a whole procedure. We are not focused on one particular polymer, either for the, uh, uh, charting or non-charting. So we want to demonstrate a procedure which can be used for any of the polymers. And also, this method can be extended to other materials, like the wood and the composite. OK, so the motivation for this work is uh, clear. And uh, I think Kevin actually uh, gave a, a very good introduction about the, the uh, parallax model, and we are the uh, few people actually working on this uh, area to look at the condensed phase paralysis. And the, there's a number of models has been developed, like the FDS paralysis model and the thermal king and the gay pedal. But the main issues related to the, all this problem, uh, this model is that the lack of the knowledge of the fundamental physical and chemical uh, properties. Supposedly, uh, when you have a new polymer that built and uh, develop in the chemical company, you want to use in your FDS or other CFD mold, you want to simulate the fire performance of, of these materials. You have no idea and no clue about the fundamental and physical properties because the polymer and the material are, are different from one to the other. So our goal is actually to give you a systematic uh, experimental procedure and to measure all these properties and we can validate these properties. So, so the, the maximum of the polymer burning is really complicated. So it involves the physical transition, the chemical kinetics, and the decomposition. 
So I'm not going to give you all details of this. So the way we are actually to focus on it is to look at the each individual properties at the same at at uh, at uh, one time. So which means that if we want to look at the uh, the condensed phase, let's remove the uh, gas phase at this moment. I'm not saying this is not important. It is important, but at this moment we focus on the condensed phase paralysis. The gas phase uh, 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 combustion can be treated as a one-dimensional uh, boundary condition in our case. So we actually we look at the one-dimensional heat and mass transfer. Uh, we, we, we need to understand what's the heat, uh, radiative and convection uh, heat transfer associated with the top uh, surface of the polymers. We look at the in-depth radiation absorption, and there's like a physical transitions. And also we look at the char formation and the chemical decomposition. And in our model, actually, we, do, we want to uh, we assume that uh, the model, uh, the, the reaction is assumed it's a first order reaction. And the, the, the polymer was mixed by a number of uh, components. And each component are represented by a, a, a number of properties, either for the chemical properties and the physical properties. So, so this procedure actually to uh, give you an idea that how we can marry all these properties individually. OK, so I'm going to start with the milligram scale first. So because. We want to look at the polymer burning. It's too complicated. So we first we look at the uh, the milligram scale first. We we, under, we want to understand some fundamental properties of the materials. What is the key rule to dominate the to, to dominate the decomposition procedure uh, of the polymer burning? So uh, the idea is that we want to use uh, uh, thermogrammetry analyzer, which is for TGA, and uh, differential scanning chemistry. Uh, DSC, uh, to look at the kinetics and the thermodynamics properties. Uh, here is an example of the, uh, of the instrument called uh, simultaneous analyze, uh, analyze, thermal analysis. So it's sent for STA. The beautiful part is this machine is that it combines the TGA and DXC, and uh, it actually can marry the TGA and the DXC simultaneously. Another beautiful part of this machine is is actually use a small, uh, re relatively small uh, amount of sample, which is about uh, uh, five milligram, and a relative low heating rate. So in which case, uh, with the small amount of uh, materials, which is usually thin, and the relative low heating rate, so we can actually exclude the thermal transport from our data analysis and the interpretation. Here, example of the uh, the carriers. We have the balance on the on the bottom, so we can measure the mass of the materials. We have the two thermal couples on uh, on the bottom of the uh, the the is there's platinum pan, so we can measure the heat flow uh, uh, change during the reference pan and the sample pan. So the reference pan is is always uh, empty. So in which case we can measure the mass change and the heat flow change at the same time. This instrument uh, uh, requires a, a, a number of uh, uh, calibrations. So I'm now to give you a good uh, 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 details uh, about the calibrations. But this calibration does require uh, uh, a lot of work. And also requ uh, requires we use uh, a number of organic and inorganic compounds, which have a uh, uh, well-known standard uh, uh, melting point and the heat of melting to calibrate the machine. OK, so let's start with the analysis of the TGA curve. So in, on the top of the curve, uh, this is a type of polymer called the POM. This is purely non-charging polymers. Uh, so on the top of the curve, it shows the, the, uh, uh, the mass, loss, uh, mass loss rate curve. On the bottom of the curve, it's a mass change. It's a mass change associated with the uh, temperature. So uh, from this plot, we can see there's uh, two main uh, reaction curves indicate that there is like, at least there's two main reactions in our model. So we, we, this is a model we, simulated, uh, we, we assume to 
uh, represent the whole procedure of the thermal deposition at the uh, at the milling scale. Uh, we actually to uh, readjust the stoichiometric coefficient and Arrhenius coefficient uh, parameters uh, to uh, optimize this uh, fitting. So the number uh, in the first direction, uh, 0.4, represents like 40% of the mass of the loss in the first direction, so we, which we can read directly from our TGE data. And then we optimize the uh, Arrhenius coefficient using uh, a few manual interactions. So basically, we can get this data. You can see our model and the, and the experiment um, fits very well. However, you know, because we perform the experiment and uh, perform small, uh, modeling in, at the low heating resistance, 10 k per minute at the nitrogen uh, atmosphere. Uh, but we want to uh, recheck and to examine our model works at higher heating rate because in fire scenarios, uh, this is this heating rate is extremely low. <coughs> so to check that our model at the higher heating rate, we first perform our experiment um, separately from the uh, first uh, uh, study. And then this is average data, by the way. So we averaged our experiment data. And then uh, we use exactly the same properties we got from the, uh, from the last slice. And we want to pr re uh, predict the uh, TGA curve for the, uh, for the higher heating rate. You can see there's a clear shift towards the higher heating rate, uh, to, towards the higher temperature in the experiment. And uh, uh, this is actually the last uh, derivation found in our uh, simulation for all the polymers, because QM was found to be have the largest heat of the decomposition, uh, which what that does it mean is that the, the, t the, the heating rate associated with this polymers experiment does not catch up with the heating rate in the, uh, uh, in, in, in the instrument. OK, then I'm, I'm going to give you ideas that how we can analyze the DSC curve. This is the curve that we got from the, uh, the instrument. And we normalize the heat flow curve by its heating rate, by, by its instantaneous <coughs> heating rate. The part of the curve that does not contain, uh, the part of the curve does not contain the, heat, uh, the peak which, which refers, the first peak refers to the heat of melt, uh, the, the melting. The second and the third peak refers to the decomposition. The part of the curve that does not contain this peak was referred to the heat, uh, 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 heat capacity. So we fit linearly uh, to this curve. Uh, uh, we get the estimate the, the heat capacity for the solid POM and melt POM. OK, at this moment, we are going to analyze the heat flow curve. This is also the normalized heat flow curve. But look at the unit here is warp per gram. So we didn't normalize by the heating rate, just about normalize the initial mass. And uh, then we, we already know the, uh, the kinetics, which refers to the, the ma uh, mass change of the each component. And we also know the heat capacity from the last an slice analysis. So we can, be, we can structure our baseline calculation here which refers to the uh, to the heat of, does not contribute to the uh, 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 melting and the decomposition. So subtracting from this baseline gives us ideas about how much energy you need to uh, improve uh, to heat to uh, make the polymer melt and to decompose the polymer. So the first peak refers to the the, the melting. Uh, give the value of heat of melting, and second and third peak refers to the heat of reaction for the decomposition. OK, at this moment, yeah, we already know the kinetics and the thermodynamics of the, of the polymer at this moment. The way we want to check our model works, we can, repre we can uh, predict the DXC, which is the heat flow curve. Uh, so we, we use all the properties, and we add to the kinetics and the thermodynamics so we can uh, build our uh, model to uh, predict the heat flow curve. Uh, you can see there is a, a good prediction, but it's not perfect. The reason it's not per perfect is because, uh, the, as I mentioned, the instantaneous heating rate does not capture uh, uh, in, the mo in the materials does not seem as the, uh, the heat prescribed heating rate in the, our simulation. So basically, the heating rate actually in the experiment 
it's kind of uh, lower than the uh, at, at, uh, was derived at the, the uh, decomposition part of the polymers, but in in the simulation, this issue has never happened. Okay, uh, the other way to uh, check our model uh, capture the energy balance of the uh, of the experiment data is that we look at the uh, heat of gasification. So here, I want to show you the plot is that we integral from the first, uh, the last slide, the heat flow curve by time. So which means that this is the num a total of uh, amount of energy that to decompose the polymers uh, from beginning to specific time. And we also plot the, uh, the, the simulation result. At the end of this, uh, at, at the top level of the, this simulation, uh, which refers to the heat of the deposition, and uh, you can see there is a clear shift uh, towards uh, to, uh, about these curves. But the, uh, the difference about uh, our experimental and the simulation uh, is about three percent uh, maximally. All right, and. Uh, here, I want to show you that we use the same, same methodology, like to apply for a number of polymers. Uh, we, we use the uh, we use the method to, for the PMMA, HIPS, and the P uh, uh, nylon. Here's the nylon 66. And uh, so, on the on left hand side, you can see the, there's a TGA curve. On the right hand side, we represent the DXA curve. And here is the summary of the of the polymers we have been down work here for the non channeling polymers. Uh, basically, on the top seven, uh, these are non-charling polymers. On the bottom eight polymers, they are charling polymers. So the charling polymers, basically, they are uh, a relative uh, complex to the non-charling polymers, and uh, they require at least uh, two reactions. For uh, for most of the non-charling polymers, they are just uh, requires like <coughs> one reactions. Okay, here I want to emphasize. Here is the. Uh, uh, I select uh, randomly like uh, seven polymers, uh, four of them are non charting and three of them are charting to extend our, our method to the uh, bench scale work. Okay, this is the part of that uh, uh, work that we already know the kinetics and thermodynamics. And one thing we didn't know is that the thermal transport properties, uh, which, which is also important for the CFT input. The way we want to uh, uh, analysis the thermal transport properties that we want to know the exactly the boundary condition of the materials under the concatenator. Here we actually propose this methodology that uh, we want to provide a similar uh, experiment but with a relative large sample. So what do we do here? We use a cone heater on the top to give a, a specific or and the fixed boundary condition on the top. We have we we. we we understand the, the top uh, boundary heat flux. And then on the back, we use a, a gold mirror and, and an infrared camera to measure the uh, mass, uh, to measure the temperature change during the uh, thermal demolition. And at the same time, we purchase the nitrogen flow at about 225 liters <coughs> per minute to minimize the oxygen concentration on the top surface of the sample. Basically, in our experiment to measure this uh, oxygen concentration is about three, about two point three percent by volume. So in this way, we can actually uh, measure the mass change using the concatenation balance, and uh, we can measure the temperature change on the back uh, uh, during the during the, this uh, during this experiment. And here is actually the idea of this uh, uh, instrument. Please don't that the, you you. you some some person maybe so there's a flame over there. It does not have a flame. It's, it's a, actually the gas losses uh, uh, volatiles actually come from the, uh, the polymer and actually refl uh, reflect from the concatenator. And uh, on the other side of the sample, we have another camera. It's a regular camera to measure to actually to monitor the the the, the surface change. I'll show you the example of that. Here, example of the. Uh, the air camera image we got from experiment, and how we analyze this is that we actually random select like ten points, and we average them. So we we select like four points from the every one, 
if we select another four points from area two and the two points from area three, we compare them, and uh, there's actually no significant difference about this uh, uh, area temperature. And then in our method for the non-channel polymers, actually we, we average all the 10 points, which give ideas about the average temperature on the back. What is, <coughs> is useful uh, is that we can actually know the thermal transport at the back surface, which nobody has ever been done in this topic. And, uh, one way we want to validate our method uh, using the Kappa and the RTS. So we, we actually uh, uh, compare our method using air camera and the thermal couple. Uh, you see there's uh, the, 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 the data get from, from our experiment is very close for using both methods, but there's a little difference uh, uh, above 600K uh, uh, because we, we paint we paint our, the, the, we measure the temperature of the copper plate. So we paint the copper plate on the back because we know the emissivity. So that's why we can input our air camera to know the emissivity. But the paint actually uh, decomposes at the higher temperature around 600K, which means that above 600K, the temperature data was not, uh, uh, was not that uh, uh, <coughs> suitable. But Below 600K, the, the, these two measures give us a good uh, result. And the other way we want to actually to measure the temperature using air commercial using a uh, actual polymer, not the copper plate. So this gives us examples that below 100, uh, 600K, our air camera and the, uh, the thermal couple measurement are pretty close. Other, okay. All right, uh, here example that we, I, I want to show you the result we got from the, uh, the, the, the cone calorimeter, uh, not cone calorimeter, the Kappa plus RTS result. On the left hand side, we can see that this is the average data, uh, uh, average temperature data for the PMMA at the 20, 40, and the 60 kilowatt per meter square. Uh, on the right hand side, you will see the mass, it's a uh, mass loss uh, rate, uh, data uh, from 20, 40, and 60. You can see they have basically a similar uh, sheet, but they have completely different time scale. On the top, uh, on the top at the 20 kilowatt per square, which is almost uh, uh, eight times longer than the, the six, 60k uh, kilowatt per square. And uh, we already know the kinetics and the thermodynamics. We optimize, uh, we actually calibrate and optimize uh, the thermal conductivity of the materials. Basically, this is only one property that we missed from the milligram scale of, uh, test. So we use the inverse modeling to uh, measure the uh, thermal conductivity of the PMA. And actually, uh, on the right, uh, left hand side, you can see the model prediction uh, uh, of the temperature. Uh, here, I want to show you the video that this is a model that we, we developed in our lab uh, actually to uh, predict the thickness change of the material and also the temperature uh, within the, uh, each layer. So you can see um, it basically plot, uh, plot at a different time scale, but it's, it's actually uh, there's, a, there's a time uh, line on the top here. Uh, the color means that the, the temperature is, uh, is different from layer to layer. And uh, when the polymer was decomposed, it actually removed from the, uh, from, from the calculation domain. So basically, uh, at the bottom part, you see the 60 kilowatt per minute square. There's almost nothing left. Yeah, you can see our prediction for the mass loss rate on the right-hand side. They are pretty good. Also, I'm going to extend uh, the method to, uh, to other polymers, uh, PUM. As I mentioned, we got the kinetics, but we have no idea about the thermal conductivity. Here's a prediction uh, for the PUM. OK. And uh, also, this is uh, HIPS, another non-channel polymer. OK, we use the same methodology. We can predict the, the, the mass loss rate. And also, I want to compare with uh, the thermal conductivity got from this study to other literature data. 
we, we, we have a conversion for the PMMA, HIPS, and the POM. So that's relatively limited of the uh, reference data. They actually, uh, for, for, the, for the thermal conductivity above the room temperature. Most of the people actually started the, the PMMA and, uh, and other polymers thermal conductivity only at the room temperature above around 300K. But nobody actually, uh, a few people actually, to step forward to the higher temperature because this is the temperature dependent properties, and it is really important. And this is critical to uh, to predict the, the burning and the uh, and the ignition of the fire in, in your safety model. Another, okay, one thing I want to emphasize here: we also extend our method to the charging polymer. This is an example of the charging polymers. You can see from here on the top, we have set cameras to look at the surface of the polymers. And it actually uh, forms like a mushroom uh, like uh, structure. And uh, on the bottom, this is air camera hole. And the base of the uh, base of the polymer actually shrank, shrank, shrank. And I, I want to show you a video here. Uh, okay. Uh, oh no, it's not video here. Uh, does not work here, but actually, it basically gave the idea that the polymer actually grows, grows, and the base is actually shrunk, shrunk. Okay, uh, this is the, the the last work I have been done for so to look at the heat release rate of all the seven polymers I studied. So uh, we measured the uh, heat release rate in using the concatenator for these polymers. That uh, you can see, th this is the peak heat release rate plus. Uh, uh, Against the heat flux, um, we can see clearly that different polymer has definitely different flammability, and the PEI <coughs> is the lowest one, but it actually captures about 50% of the char uh, uh, during the, uh, the burning. And uh, the last validation work, actually, we want to, because the previous model actually we developed in our lab, we want to extend to other parallel model. So we use FDS parallel model to simulate the, the, the same scenarios. So we use the same properties we get from this study. We use the same boundary conditions. We use the tem same temperature scale. So here's a prediction for the three non channel polymers. And uh, all of these properties are exactly the same from our model. And there's a little difference about the, our model and the, uh, and the FDS uh, parallelism. You can see that our method actually from the beginning, from the mini gram scale to the band scale, actually capture uh, capture the, the burning uh, behaviors of the different polymers. And the last, I want to conclude my study is that we are actually the first few people actually to <coughs> simulate the, 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 we can actually sum, uh, simultaneously reproduce the TG and DSA curve. And we also actually measure the thermal de de uh, dependent thermal uh, properties, like the thermal uh, connectivities for, from really uh, uh, like a really uh, Easy way to actually to uh, uh, to measure all these properties, and then the combination of the mini scale test and the uh, band scale test actually to uh, represents like uh, the routines that can generate the complete property set, and uh, and provide the validation procedures. So in the future, you have no idea about the polymers that from the, the other industry, and uh, you can use our method actually to uh, to measure all these properties and put in the FDS model. And in the last, I want to thank a few people from uh, our lab. And I also want to thank one uh, student from uh, from China to help me to uh, conduct the experiment, and also want to thank Nick to provide the funding to this study. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, one brief question: If we uh, anybody wants to ask one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Some of the college in our lab actually have already demonstrated this method to the uh, cardboard, you know, the concrete cardboard, which is like uh, similar to the wood, but uh, it, it ha does require a, a number of uh, more reactions to this uh, model, but it actually requires a lot of work. I mean, here I want to demonstrate the whole procedure that for the non channel problem, it's basically a, a simple way to look at these materials. Mm -hmm. But it does not mean that our method can only focus on the, the polymers. It can extend to other composite materials as well. Okay. Thank you very much.
Thank you.